Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trophy the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Throne Break the Witcher Tales for what might be the final episode. Because we're uh, wrapping up in Rivia. I think we've done everything. We'll check this right now. So, six hours and 14 minutes, nine quests completed, six puzzles, nine standard battles, and all golden chests found. So, let's head in. The castle of Rivia now loomed before the Lyrians. Water surrounded it on three sides, and dual defensive walls studded with podgy turrets completed its perimeter. It was famously difficult to take, and had changed hands only once. A few months before, when traitors opened its gates to the Nilfgaardians. Foreign banners waved upon the walls. The Golden Sun and General Epdahi's crest on Rivia's walls. The walls of home. There was somber silence among the troops, the glee and pride of many triumphs suddenly gone. For each knew if the Queen ordered an assault, most would lie dead by sunrise. Your Majesty, began Reynard in a reassuring tone. We needn't strike quickly, we've time on our side. To prepare would be wise. Two months, I wager, perfectly enough. We stop supplies from getting through. They'll capitulate, I've little doubt. Or at worst, be too weak to defend the fortress. Reynard's reasoning was sound. There was no need for urgency. Meave had the upper hand for the first time in this war. Lay siege, cut off the castle of Rivia, or withdraw. Um, so yeah, lay siege, I suppose. Like that. These invaders have grown fond of Rivia Castle, said Meave. So let them stay and rot. Reynard, erect road barricades and guard posts between city and citadel. Gascon, seize all boats, barges, anything that floats. Stop anything from entering from the lake. Move! Soon, Rivia Castle stood isolated from the world outside its walls. All roads leading to it were blocked, impassable. Fishing boats, a cordon, embraced the fortress on Loch Escalot. The lanterns on their bows glowed like fireflies in summer. Then, an emissary from the castle brought a message for the Queen. General Epdahi wished to meet, face to face, and half the way between the Citadel and the Lyrian camp. Well, well, some general, smirked Gascon. We barely snapped the trap shut, yet he's already shaking in his knickers. Meave proceeded to the meeting point without delay. A lone rider soon appeared on the horizon. He came adorned in rich black robes, their golden trim shimmering in stray sunbeams. She'd seen him before, in Edel, through the megascope. Ardol Abdahi. You came as I requested. Good. Very good. There he is, the man himself. So, that's a blue. What the hell is that? Is that a fox? A blue fox. I do love that they they all have their own animal, which is a, a nice touch. I do wonder why we could withdraw. Was it just to delay the main quest? I don't know. But there we go. I couldn't possibly refuse such a courteous invitation, especially as compared to your previous missive. The art of diplomacy. You've improved your grasp. Your realm fell quickly. I expended little strength in seizing it. This left me much time to study. But please, we must set aside this bitterness. I'd like to formally welcome you to Rivia, dear Queen. So, I might want to add a bit more background information. So, in the books, it becomes clear that a few leaders of certain Nilfgaardian families are unhappy with Emir. Uh, so Emperor Emir Varimris is his uh, abilities and his leadership and they want to overthrow him. So a few of them are, for example, Stefan Skellen, who gives Siri her scar, um, but among which also Ardal Abdahi. So he is actually a character from the books. He's uh, the leader of the Dahi, the Abdahi family. Uh, Joachim de Vet is another name, but... Uh, those guys actually stand against their empire in their emperor in secret. So the fact that he's being left alone here gives you a bit of an indication that Emir might be onto them. 
onto the traitors within his own rank. So uh, that's why Abdahi, Ardal Abdahi, is alone in uh, Rivia. So moving on. I see you've readily adopted the role of gracious host in my home. In point of fact, I've grown fond of the castle. Fortifications impressive, atypical of the north. Not so your brave soldiers, whom we shall pick off like ducks. I pity them, in fact. Dry your eyes, General. Rest easy. I've no plans for a quick assault. I shall first wait to hear the rumbling in your bellies. Remarkable. You truly believe you can win this war. I've not been in the North long, but have discovered something all the same. You don't grasp complex ideas. You know Nilfgaard is large, but your minds don't fathom its enormity. You see, for every army you defeat, another will come to take its place. One larger and better equipped than the one before. Even now, as we so pleasantly chat, Army Group East is en route to lift your siege. Due to arrive tomorrow. And do you know what will happen when they do? They will crush you against your own castle's walls, like the maddening flea you are. So, get to the point. I shall not be insulted nor intimidated or go plow yourself. So, let's get to the point. A charming analogy. But get to the point. Why do you ask for this meeting? For this very reason. I wish to see you with my own eyes. They did not see enough in Edda. Are you such an admirer of feminine beauty? Oh, Chica Bow Wow. You flatter yourself. No, in you, I see an animal. Game. Prey. And as the hunt's due to start soon, I needed a more detailed image of the beast I'll be looking for. Okay. That's more than a bit creepy. <laughs> you, on a hunt. Those delicate hands have never held spear or bow. Now sharper than a letter opener, I wager. Tomorrow you will not be on a hunt. Tomorrow you will be at war. You best pray to all your gods you don't find me. So the East Army Group, if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, the East Army Group is actually led by Joachim the Vet. So the other family, well, one of the five families, I think, that tried to overthrow Emir. Without awaiting a response from General Epdahi, Meave pivoted and turned toward camp. Her pace was quick, despite a heavy heart. Okay. The camp. Oh, look at Nickers. Look at Nickers. He's a good boy, isn't he? Okay, so we have Egg at the bottom there. The good book states the just always prevail. With no cause for despair. Hello, Egg. The black clads shall shed their shields and flee for the first cock crows. Nilfgaard fights by the sword, thus it shall fall by the sword. The good book states the just always prevail. Okay. Thank you, X. So we have a bit more dialogue for each character, I suppose. So we just had Egg. I'm just going to check out every tent because otherwise I don't want to miss anything. Uh, since this is probably the final scene, I can talk to this guy. This looks like... nope. Just a random guy. Okay, 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 okay. So apparently I've, I've never uh, realized this while reading the books, but, uh, but I'm almost complete with my third time reading them. Okay, Arniolf, but uh, Black Rayla actually transforms into the... Well, transforms may be a, a fancy word for that, but uh, changes over time into White Rayla, uh, a horrifying woman who uh, looks... Well, has a lot of scars, missing pieces of her body, and, uh, well, really, really hating on elves and dwarves and everything non-human. So uh, it's uh, probably for the best that we don't have her in our group anymore, so we can't go down. So hello, Arniolf. Don't use Dare sound the retreat, got it? My axe craves blood, Nilfgaardian blood. Gonna be one hell of an. Okay, so that's that. I think everybody has three lines then, I suppose. So this Arbalest dude, gonna keep him. And I wanna pet him. Come on, no dialogue for Nickers. Oh, I wanna pet the good boy. The wicked good boy. Yes, he's a good boy. Okay, moving on. I'm a queen after all. Um, Anybody else? We still have. A few people left. 
Who's the Skyrim looking fellow? Is that a... What are you wearing? Is that a drinking... I don't know what that is. So that's that. Moving along. Just normal soldiers. Nobody's yelling at me. The frame rate drips once ever. Look at the giant camp. That's Gascon and Reynard. Uh, where's the rest of my... I have more people, right? Oh no, kind of forgot that we left Barnabas in that village last time. So, no. That's basically all our allies that we have left. Because, uh, of course, Isabel left us right before the end. So, here we have our true two mm. most trusted advisors. Hello, fellas. And we have... Ooh. Ooh, would you look at that. Rivia Castle? Meade's yeah, Rivia Castle. closest advisors already awaited her in the command tent. In a few brief words, the Queen gave a report of the meeting, only with great effort masking the quavering in her voice. An army, an immense one, approaches from the west. If we meet in open battle, we stand not a chance. Damn it! Why did no one warn me? Our scouts were discovered. Captured. It must be that. We must flee? Not at all heroic, I admit, but sure as hell better than being trampled into the dirt. Easily said, but for a problem. Our force is chiefly infantry. The army that draws near includes cavalry, several regiments. We cannot hope to escape them. We cannot hope to hide. So we need to capture the castle. We need to take the castle. There's no other way around it. What do you advise? We've two options. Capitulate. Out of the question. Or take the castle. Tonight. Who? What of the costs? Suppose for a moment it's possible. Tell me how and at what cost. Are we to scale a mountain of comrades' corpses to reach the top of the wall? I know we're at war and many die. But to command our troops to take that citadel is to condemn them to certain death. Rivia's walls are unassailable. I fully agree. But there's more than one way to take any fort. And this fort too. I think I like where this is going. Yeah, I think I like where this is going too. Though our boys are going to work together. I know this citadel like no one else. I know it's one potential weakness. The boat landing. Wait. That narrowest of piers between the two turrets? The one where the fishermen would land? The same. As I'm sure you recall, Your Grace, at that narrow pier's end stands a narrow door leading straight into the fortress. A small detachment could approach unnoticed, overwhelm any sentries, and get inside. What then? They would need to pass through the fort to the winch in the guardhouse, open the gate for the rest of the force. Reynard, I'll be honest. This sounds right mad. Perhaps, but as options go, we have it alone. And I'm to choose to send folk there. Most certainly to die. You needn't choose anyone, for I volunteer. And we'll take only those willing to do the very same. Bloody wretched plan. And you've a better one, do you? Of course. I'll go instead. Beg your pardon? I don't. Face it, Reynard, you couldn't sneak past a corpse. Sound like a bloody tambourine in that armor. Apart from which, you're Meave's right hand. So you ought to be by her side when the fighting starts. He has a point. Yeah, Gascon is definitely the man for the task. There's, it's a small detachment. We're gonna need Reynard to lead the army when the battle actually starts. So Gascon is the only guy to do this, right? This is the most logical choice. I don't even see how you would choose otherwise. So, and I'm supposing that you could have sent them both away. So either one of them away, which would mean that the... That's probably the decision that impacts the story the most. Because if those guys are gone, you don't get this decision, I suppose. So Gascon is definitely the man for the task. Firstly, Reynard. I'm grateful. Well done, my friend. Thank you, Your Grace. But truth be told, I did indeed hear you walking to the tent from the other side of camp. And yes, you know Rivia Castle better than anyone else. But the assault must transpire silently. Gascon will lead the force. Understood, Your Grace. Cheers, Meave. I'll try not to disappoint. You won't, I'm sure. God speed you on your way, and please, try your damnedest not to die. Gascon hand-picked his men, those most adept with daggers, not swords. Noiselessly, they glided through the dark toward the castle, 
the light of its lanterns blurred by the evening mist. Meave watched anxiously as the boats glided away, her heart pounding in her ears. All depended on this mission. The fate of her realms, perhaps all the North, the lives of her troops, and her own. Now there was naught she could do but wait. Good luck, she whispered, gazing at the fortress walls, cloaked by the dark that seemed to surround all now. God damn, this is tense. Um, so yeah, I feel like we're definitely gonna lose people here, but uh, here we go. The Lyrians prepared for battle, their silence absolute, in darkness, illuminated only by the pale light of the moon. Meave was restless. She paced nervously in a circular pattern, awaiting the signal they'd agreed upon. Blast, it's taking long. Much, much too long. Finally, a torch's faint glow appeared atop the towering walls. It disappeared, then glowed again, and one more time around. Meave leapt in the air, and as she did so, barely stifled a cry of utter joy. They made it. It worked. Let's hope so. I'm not convinced just yet. Moments later, Lyrians in the hundreds burst from the trees. Lyria! The Nilfgaardian defenders loaded their catapults and ballistae. They did so slowly, convinced the castle walls remained impenetrable. Then they heard chains grinding and clinking, and the sound sent shivers down their spines. Bewildered, they watched the main gate rise as the attacking force rushed forth. General Epdahi dispatched an elite unit to take back the winch at once. Yet he saw this was in vain and all was lost when Meave rode into the castle courtyard. God damn, I like the writing in this game. It is amazing. Meave had begun the day known as a great warrior. Yet by night's end, legend was the cloak she wore. Her shield stopped powerful blow after blow as her blade found gaps in her foe's black armor. At first, Nilfgaardian scoured the fray in search of the queen, hoping to prove great heroes. Soon, she was their chief scourge, and they began to flee before her blade that sung their death. Retreat! Retreat! That's a... Funny way of saying retreat. What was this extraordinary vigor that surged through Meave? Naturally, she wished to liberate her castle and realm, drive off the invaders, defeat the arrogant General Epdahi. But in that moment, above all else, she longed to fight her way through to the guardhouse and bring Gascon's party relief. Follow me! Move! Move! Meave had expected the worst. A bloodbath, piles of corpses, Yet all in the guardhouse was eerily quiet and calm. Okay. The door to the winch room lay shattered, true. But this was the one sign there'd been any sort of struggle. What happened here, she thought. Cautiously, she entered, looking, searching for any trace of Gascon and his fighters. Instead, she spotted Willem, curled up in a corner, clutching his bloodied belly, his fingers not enough to stop all the holes. Oh my god. Meave tore off her cloak and went to stem the bleeding. Wow. So Willem raised the gates. Willem. What, what happened here? My rungs. I sought to right them. Wheezed the prince. <laughs> Please. Forgive me. <laughs> the young prince choked on this last word did not manage to utter it before his eyes went dull. Moments later, her men entered the room to find the queen kneeling, pounding the wall with her fists, her eyes flooded with tears. Willem lay motionless beside her, covered by her cloak. Gascon pushed his way through the other foot soldiers. He knelt beside the queen and whispered what had happened. His unit had not managed to reach the gate in time, but Willem had. Upon seeing Lyrian forces converging on the fort, the prince had rushed to the guardhouse and opened the gate himself. By the time Nilfgaardians closed it again, it was too late. The Lyrians were through. The queen rose, 
her fists clenched, her shoulders rigid, her knuckles white. Her face betrayed no sorrow, no despair, just rage, hot as a forge, immeasurable. Now's not the time to mourn, seethed Meave, struggling to stay calm. Now's the time for war, for slaughter, revenge. With victory today, we'll recover our home, return to our kin and set our blades aside at last. Yet until victory is ours, they must drink. Drink greedily of Nilfgaardian blood! Yes. The Illyrians were at the brink, near their breaking point. They'd followed me for thousands of miles, over snow-clad peaks, through forbidding swamps. They'd fought, survived countless battles at her side. And though their gazes were now weary, she knew they'd follow her into fire. Listen to that. The black clad. They've holed themselves up in the upper keep. We went to breach the wall. Alas, to no avail. Meave nodded, twirled her sword, then leapt upon a mount. Her eyes spoke pure determination. Fuck yes. So we'll bloody well try again. There we go. Woo! Kinda cried there. The upper keep. The walls of the upper keep were illuminated by torchlight and the glow of burning buildings. Even in the dark of night, Meave could easily discern the fear twisted faces of the Nilfgaardian defenders. The queen wiped tears from her cheeks, blackened with ash, and reached for her sword. The dime had finally come to drive the black lads out, once and for all. So standard story battle with amazing music. And uh, I'm just gonna talk over this because I don't want to miss any bit of the music. So Nick is out, uh, to the adapts out, and egg out. Hmm. I'm gonna get rid of reinforcements as well and get rid of the foyer too. There we go. Finish that. This is the end of Dahi. Do you hear me? I shall stick your head on a pike. There we go. So hmm. he's gonna pull. Whoa, wait, what? Reveal a unit from each player's deck. Uh, if yours has Baru? Okay, I'm gonna check that. If yours has more power, boost an ally by 10, which didn't happen. Whenever an ally is destroyed, summon another unit from your deck in its place. Ten times per turn. Jesus, okay. Let's start heavily here, so let's do the war wagon. You can try to win them all. Those are all boosted and armored, and then we can use Meave to play that again. But maybe adds. hmm. Did we play a Rivian Ology already? I think I'm going to. Uh, so that way I can use the... I have to use adapt to duplicate the ologies. And then the ologies up close here. So that's two charges. I might as well take out the armor of one of these. And this guy boosts up a number of units in your hand after three turns to repeat the deployability. Preferably near not. Thank you. Your fortress has superbly solid walls. So reveals another unit. It's 11. Uh, versus 19. So yeah, boost something by 10. That is gonna hurt. Okay. So I think Arnulf next. So damage an enemy by the total number of enemy units. The sooner I can do that, the better. <laughs> And there goes Nickers. And then the turn. That's not gonna be higher. That's definitely not gonna be higher. Ooh. And more armor dudes. Okay, so that's uh, eight dudes. I'm gonna start removing armor here. Um, then. Do I play the Arthusa Adept or the Vana Runestone? I think the Vana Runestone first to get some damage in. So light infantry. That does boost those guys. Like that. Okay. And then three charges on these. Is I'm gonna keep them alive. Because he gets extra units in if they die. So let's get that on the spotter. 
And end the turn. Enough! I do not need to hear this. Kill her! Three assassins. Three assassins. On turn start, damage the highest power enemy unit by five if its power is an even number. It is even, but I can actually damage those guys if I want to. So. Hmm. I need a way to damage my own light infantry units. Problem is that I can't really do that immediately. Um, but I do want to take that first round. So let's damage. Uh, so that is 8 and 11. So 11 over here. And then you play the Ligan Hushduk and give them no, two no, charges. Already, which boosts that again. And I can play 11 over here. And 3 over here. They haven't killed. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Yeah, okay. That kind of fucked me there, but... Um, I'm gonna play the Aratusa Adept then, not on the range row, because otherwise that's gonna hurt. Aratusa Adept and duplicate the honor juice. And damage... I'm gonna have to kill an assassin. My highest units are even. I'm gonna have to kill an assassin. Does his ability work? Yeah. God damn it. Wow. Okay. Um, kill another one. And he gets another unit out. This is annoying. This is so annoying. Um. Damn. The drummer then? Not on the range throw. Again. I'm not even over. And he has 88 cards as well. This is gonna suck. Um, so take out... Armor then, I suppose? Or just... A high amount of stuff here. Use the drummer. Ever have a storm knock out one of your teeth? And kill those four light infantry units. Ah, that boosts them again. And of course, that happens. I killed something, so it's gonna respawn. Ooh, yeah, this is bad. This is really bad. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, I think I kind of fucked myself there. Um,. Let's shuffle Arniel back in. And then play the Wagenberg and the Aratusa Adapt. So Wagenberg. Aratusa Adapt. Oh, oh, Lady Margarita told us. More villagers. <clears throat> then damage this entire row by six, which kills two things. Oh, that's not good. That's not good. So how far can I go? This is not doing anything. I'm just wasting cards. Because that kills a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna restart. Now with the Wagenberg, we can actually do enough damage and we get an extra armor. That's annoying, but it's probably gonna be for the best. It only adds one more unit instead of two. So let's do... wait. Let's do Arniel first. On the Derlin foot soldiers. No, wait, 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 wait. Wagenberg first. Like this. That kills one unit. But we have... Enemy units, which is 6 and it's 11. So 11 on the spotter. And that brings us above. No extra boosts. So that's the first round for us. There we go. Fools! I'm surrounded by fools! You might be. 
Nickus has resilience, so he's gonna stay there. How about the amount of blacksmiths we're having? We should be fine for now. So I'm gonna... Hmm. Get rid of the Rivian Sapper for now. And the Rivian Onichi. There we go. Uh, Grey Rider first. In the back row. I live to serve you. And then the turn. And 11 for us, and 10 for them, so no boosts. Okay, okay, okay. So I'm going to have to be careful, because... So now I'm going to play the Rivian Onager over here. So he gets boosted and armored up. Then me and Granny Blade can replay the Grey Rider. And we're going to use War Wagons now, because we can. We can. So, War Wagon. What do I have on the field now? An Onager. So, if I can play a War Wagon and reinforcements. Yeah, that's exactly what we're going to do. So, a War Wagon over here. Kind of battles. Hungry like a wolf, I am. And then reinforcements on the Rivian Onagers. Which gives us two extra. But they get boosted and protected. And that also gives us enough charges to take out the armor and actually completely... No, we're going to keep it like that, because if we destroy it, we get an extra unit, so don't forget about that. Aye, 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 that's not something I'd like to see, because that guy sucks. That gets that guy a boost, which is fine. Okay. So, order abilities... Um, so let's keep it simple for now. Devana Runestone. Uh, is he the same or is this? Yeah. Boost out by two and gain two armor. Okay, so Devana Runestone first. On the light infantry units. Destroying them. Ah! Okay. That was bad luck. But let's end it there. Forager out. And that's, yeah, the desert guys. Lirian Blacksmith. Lirian Blacksmith on the top row. Something from nothing. It's exactly what I And get the Devana reinforcements. Reinforcements isn't gonna help me just yet, is it? So let's do Devana Runestone first. Devana Runestone on the infantry units, please. Ah, oh, come on. Come on, I want it on this fucking asshole. Okay, okay. That's good. We're increasing the graveyard, which is fine. So let's end the turn. And we're still doing damage. We haven't killed anything. Barbarians. Boost an allied machine by four and give it resilience. That's not good. Nine and seven. Ours is higher. Now... How far along are we? How many units do I have in my graveyard? I think that's 12 units, right? 12 is just enough. So... You know what? I'm gonna play reinforcements first. I'm just guessing what I should do, so... A war wagon gives us four units, which means the top one will be full and the back one will be full. So, because I would still have two war wagons if I'm not mistaken. Hmm, this might be wrong. Because I don't have four foragers, I think. Well, we'll see. Let's just use the blacksmith. Let's use the blacksmith on the top row. Use reinforcements. There we go. And play war wagons. It's only one, apparently, which is actually fine. So put that on the bottom row. Try to win them all. And they're all boosted and protected. No order abilities have been used just yet, so that is fine. And end the turn. There goes Dagur. Which is also higher. Fair enough. I warned you. Ooh, that is that's high. But, I think we can do this, right? So those are all 12. 
So that's 12 units in the graveyard. So let's use Skull. Select 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That's not an order ability, so that row is down. Okay, great. I'd like the other ones better, so that's fine. And then we can use the Onagis to break down pretty much everything. Like that. Just not killing anything. And especially taking down the armor on this thing. And yeah, let's just reduce those to pretty much nothing. Like that. Revealing, revealing, revealing. That is also not higher. Archers. Oh wow. Obscure the sun with arrows. Damage all enemies by four. That's gonna hurt. Okay. This is gonna... Yeah, that's getting rid of my benefits there. This is interesting. This is very interesting. Um, okay. Let's try this out then. I want to see what happens. I have a Looks lot like of extra stuff here. Yeah, that's... To get dull. 11 charges. Uh, the Nilfgaardian Knight. I actually want to kill something now, right? Let's kill that thing. That wish I'm in a random unit from your deck. So I don't want to kill that either. Um... Like that then, I suppose. Let's kill those. I want to reduce that champion by a bit now. And I fear that those charges might actually go away. And since they're played, they don't actually trigger. So like that, I think is going to be fine. Yeah. There we go, his ability again. Oh yeah, that's definitely higher. Um, now, big combo. I really need a big combo. So I'm going to play the highest unit. Yeah, the, the graveyard is completely busted at the moment. So, me and Granny Blade. Let's pull back the... Do I still have... I still have Skull in my graveyard if I want to. So let's pull back the... Onager. Then, I have a 48 egg. So let's just play the Grey Rider. And egg. So Grey Rider up here. Without hesitation. Egg down here. Prepare to fight if you've any like honor. this. Then destroy the armor of this guy almost. Use marching orders. And use Meave to replay the Rivian Onager, maybe. Yeah, because he's only four points. So let's replay the Rivian ah! Onager. Well, remove the Rivian Onager. We're gonna be risky. So mantlet and the Forager. So Mantlet we can use to actually mark a unit. So that's gonna be Egg, like this. And then use the Forager to just grab the Grey Rider and Egg. So I destroy Egg, but Egg comes into my hand and my Mantlet is destroyed. So that's basically the best thing I can do right now, I think. And then I have some more charges. So let's blast those guys and hope for the best. <laughs> so I'm going to play Egg as well. Because now Egg is even... I basically doubled Egg. Oh, drop three cards and boost all allies by two. Are you flipping serious? Okay, so I'm gonna put Egg on the board just to have a huge point advantage and hope for the best. Here we go. 
I fear not. And he's still gonna be boosted every time something gets damaged, so... Pass! And, uh, cross our fingers. He's gonna keep doing that, so that's 10 points each time if he's able to pull that off, like he just did. Oh my god, are you serious? No way! Oh my god, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If he keeps going for the lower units. And those are engines as well. Well, at least he's wasting a lot of cards. I'm not going to win this round. Oh my god. Yeah, if he has one of those still in his hand. Off to the front yet again. Oh god. 11 versus 9, okay. Didn't trigger. This is ridiculous. 12 versus 8, okay. Ah, oh, those Darlin foot soldiers keep coming. I think once more and he's good, I think. 11 versus 16, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's over. Damn. And that's our best units gone. Oh no. Oh no. Order will triumph. It must triumph. Oh no. I have nothing. How am I gonna win this? And I'm. Th this view is useless. So. I can only use Meave's ability once more, so might as well just slay the brawler and see what happens. This is come on. That was not in the spell books. This is impossible. Oh, those get boosted. Oh no no no. Oh nose nose nose. Um. Um. Well, yeah. What do I have in the graveyard? No Skellige units whatsoever. So... I am boned. I am boned. Now, how did that incantation go? He just pulled six extra cards at the end there. Ah, oh, and his Darlin foot soldiers keep going. Um, but who? Uh, what? But but I don't, I don't even. Well, disgrace brawlers, disgrace brawlers. Then the Ligand Hush took. And then double that, and double that. Then replay one of the disgrace brawlers. For a blacksmith. And um, I have no idea what else. So blacksmith and Rainer then I suppose. So the blacksmith is gonna Oh, I can still do that as well. Could have used two blacksmiths. But marching orders first. So that's marching orders, and then for Reynard, Her Majesty is exceptional. which gives us two charges again. Then me and Granny Blade to put the disgraced brawler away, and yeah, give you an onager, give you an onager. I'll try to damage what I get back, but hey, hey, don't toss that. It's perfectly usable. So as much as possible. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. That's two deaths, and that's double down. And then an onager, which does, yeah, basically nothing, right? Oh my god, I, did, I, I couldn't even get over him. Wow. <clears> hmm. <throat> 
You lost the round. Oh, ho, 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 ho. There is no special requirement. Okay. Let's restart, I suppose. Okay, third attempt in the final round. I had a pass round as a second round. So I'm 9 to 10 cards right now, but he hasn't played his scorpion yet. The uh, fire scorpion, the giant fire scorpion yet, hefty held. And the damage all enemies by four, and yeah, pretty much every single one of his heavy hitters and the draw three cards thing either. So, we're a bit in a pinch, but we'll start with the... Um, disgraced Warriors, like this. And start to have them just as folder. Because I know it's coming. I know the damage everything thing is coming. So that's going to be annoying, but something I'll have to deal with. So the Disgraced Warrior again. Waiting for a personal invitation. And now I think it's high time we start using our main uh, drawers here. So if I pull back that Disgraced Warrior, I can actually play... Skull is going to be pretty much the last thing I'll do. So, a War Wagon and the Arthusa Adept. War Wagon over here. Can't take it and the Arthusa Adept right next to it. Avoiding playing on the range road <sighs> too much. These school loans. Uh, so, there we go with the. Or do we pick Onagers? Could pick Onagers as well, but maybe pick Onagers for reinforcements then? And end the turn. There's the heavy fire scorpion. He picks Reynard. And that one, so no boost this time. So now. Um, let's use marching orders now, which should reduce it to zero. Then. Play the Wagenberg in the next turn, sadly. And we're gonna play our last Arthusa Adept in a second, so pull back the War Wagon. Wagon? War Wagon? War Wagon! The War Wagon as usual. Put it on the back row. And then the. Arthusa Adept, there we go. War Wagon on the back row. Carny battles. Hungry like a wolf. Arthusa Adept on the top row. As you wish, my lady. And yeah, go f all in on the onages. There we go. So and the turn there. That's that. I'm hoping the damage all units by four is not now, just yet. Archers. Oh no. Okay. 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 Uh, I need one more turn for the Onager. We'll see, we'll see. I need at least one turn for the Onager to actually work fully, the combo. So that's two charges on the Onager. Am I playing them already? Yes, I am. I'm going to play on the Heavy Fire Scorpion. Um, and then the turn. I think it's about to come. Yeah, I think we're gonna get the damage all enemies by four now, which is sad. Is it now? Nope, nope, no. Okay, that's good. That's good. It's very good. So now, a reinforcements. Do I play the Wagenberg first? Because that's gonna be a nice one as well if I can pull that off. But I'm risking a lot if that's no. Yeah, no. Onagers it is. Onagers. Reinforcements on the Onager. So, wherever we can place them, spread out a bit and armored up as much as we can. And there we go. So now when the damage in by four comes... And please come then. Because if it doesn't come, I'm going to have a problem now. <laughs> come on. Come on. Archers at the ready. 
Archers at the ready. That's something, but not enough. Oh, that's annoying. I'm gonna have to kill off the warrior. Which is fine, I suppose. Um, I'm gonna kill off the warrior, yeah. I'm gonna have to. Okay, so let's kill off the warrior at the Dalen foot soldiers. Oh no, he had armor. Oh fuck. Yeah. I fuck myself. I fuck myself. Yeah, disgrace Brawlictals. Damn it. Artists, there it is. Let it be night. Obscure the sun with Okay, arrows. that's good. That's really good. Yeah, that's gonna dish out some damage. Dish out damage and get rid of most of those armor pieces. Now, we have a lot of charges, which is good. But first things first, I should probably use the Wagenberg now, as soon as possible. I guess. That's five on the Wagenberg. Um, then the charges. Definitely get rid of the armor here. Then... Kill off the fire scorpion. Yeah, it's gonna do damage otherwise, so let's just kill it. Uh, get at least rid of the armor over there. And damage all those by whatever we have. Like this. Raining down fire. Oh, stop, stop, stop. Most of it to five. Do I want to keep going? I don't want to, right? Although, fuck it. Want to get rid of... Ooh, what the fuck is that? Okay. Okay. Let's stay like that then. That is weird. My prescription. Oh! A bit of blood letting. Always annoying, but... Not that big of a problem. Yeah, goddammit. Phew. He didn't draw three more cards, which is interesting. So the forager over here. Oh, and he destroys it. Destroy the next unit played from your opponent's hand. Okay. Uh, okay. Nothing too problematic, I suppose. Um, just damage as much as I can to five and four. Yeah, should be fine. Um, three more cards. Blacksmith, which is also something I'm gonna use in a second. Okay. So, first off, Meave. Pull back... Do I pull back the Onager? I think I should, right? Pull back the Onager. Then, Egg and the Mantlet again? That would be interesting. So, Egg and the Mantlet. So, Egg... The unworthy shall be punished. Mantlet over here. Mark egg. Then we play the blacksmith on the same row. Hey, hey, don't touch that. It's perfectly usable. And reduce Meave's cooldown. Like this. Then. I think what I need is a forager. Yeah, I'm not gonna see it over here. So let's use Meave and Granny Blade to pull back that other almost down Rivian Onager. And then get a forager out, Dogger Two Blades. So forager over here. If the wind won't come up, and then Dogger the Two Blades up. over here. On hand and play. Those guys, again. 
which is just enough. But I get the forager again, so there we go. And that destroys the mantlet. And then we have nine damage on the back row if you want to. But let's just damage a whole bunch of guys right now. Um, yeah, let's put them all to four. For now, at least. And then end the turn. And he keeps going, the asshole. Come on, play a unit. Praise be to the great sun! Okay. So first things first, Arnulf. Um, you know what? Wagenberg first. Wagenberg on the back row. That at least reduces that Nelf Guardian champion to quite a bit. Then. I think I'm going to keep the Skellige units like they are. Because otherwise they're going to die anyway. Um, and we just reduce... Do we kill another unit? Ah, uh, we could. Let's just kill this thing. Because he just keeps copying otherwise. And we get another one of those. Um... Might as well damage it like this first. Damage it twice more. And then get rid of the rest of that stuff. Bye. Yeah, okay. And then play Egg. Prepare to fight if you've any honor. And that's it. I think. Could as well do 2 times 3 damage. Uh, like this. Because that damages us a bit. And yeah, it's all or nothing now. But I feel like this is not going to be enough. He gets tremendous value that with the... Ah, uh, that's 23. That's good. So with his leader ability and with the Derland Foot Soldiers, he gets a lot of value from his deck. That's 11, maybe? Yeah, that's above. Because there they are. So if I have bad luck, that it might be over. Yeah, so that's... Off to the front uh, yet again. Four more. And we get 10 points every time, but this field is full. This field is starting to fill up. He gets the 10 boosts every time, though. Oh, oh, this, yeah. I think we're dead. This is gonna get the 10 boosts off every single time now. Mm. That time he didn't. Highly curious case. That was quite a bit, so 70 points left. Oh no, oh no. 60 points left. I warned you. Oh, his field is full. He's mm. fucked. Did we win? We won. Guys, we won. Because he can't... Oh, he can't boost by that, but that's pretty much it. Yes. Yes. Tell me where. Finally. That took me over an hour. Okay, well, that was a fight. The upper hand, yet the black-clad spirits had suffered. They now made more use of shields than of swords. When me finally broke through their line, they raised their arms in surrender. Rivia Castle had fallen. It was hers once more. Troke! Nein to win! Meave showed her prisoners of war mercy, knowing full well they'd only followed orders. Death would be the fate of only Ardl Epdahi, the one Nilfgaardian who'd issued those commands. Alas, the general had disappeared. A prisoner revealed Epdahi had fled as soon as the Lyrians had surged towards the upper keep. He had glided down to the lower castle in a wicker basket for transporting food. Curled up beneath potato skins and other scraps, he'd scurried away not unlike a common maggot. Meave cursed her luck and leaned back against a Merlin. Dawn was yet a few hours off. But the horizon had already begun to glow blood red. 
The Nilfgaardian reserves now drew near, too late to prevent the castle's fall. I'll get him, muttered the queen, more to herself than anyone else. I swear on all that's sacred, I'll catch the bastard. But now we've a pressing matter to see to, preparing the defense. Okay. That night, the war turned, with the battle for Rivia Castle as its fulcrum. Meave's great victory, not only retaking the stronghold in a single evening, but also fending off a further invading army, proved the Nilfgaardian Colossus had feet of clay. And there we go, that's a quote directly from the books, the feet of clay. The music is back. Oh, drink it success. Okay, there's no place like home. Trophy. Okay, music went away. I like that music. Hello. I like that music. The armies of the north had united and now seemed to be on the attack everywhere. Imperial forces, while still far more numerous, lay stretched over thousands of miles. Their position was untenable, and Nilfgaard's commanders knew this. In a decisive battle, they yet stood a chance, so they gave said battle and suffered a resounding defeat. Just a few months on from that memorable night in Rivia, the Imperial army was in utter disarray. Aldersburg, the fortress, remained a last point of resistance. General Ep Dahi and what had survived of Army Group East had dug in there. This place, where Nilfgaard had triumphed grandly in the war's early days, would now bear witness to its impending defeat. It seems history, after all, has a sense of justice, or humor, or both. Though Meave had already reclaimed her realm, she refused to retire her sword just yet. For King Demavend had requested her aid in purging Edern of the invader. How could she refuse? She owed the king a favor, firstly. Yet she also had a burning desire to settle the score with Epdahi. Demavend's envoy and I spoke, Your Majesty. The king has Aldersburg surrounded. He awaits and won't begin the assault till you arrive. Good. I truly hate to miss it. Tell the troops to prepare. Gear and ire. Of course, Your Grace. Yes? Is there something else? Pardon my boldness, Your Grace, but... I can't help but be concerned. You don't sleep. You have the air of illness about you. Reynard, I just buried my son, who died in my arms, goddammit. Yes. Died a hero. Your Majesty, I wasn't sure Willem could ever wash away the shame. He'd betrayed his country, his mother, aligned with the fiercest of our foes. But his actions in Rivia washed away his wrongs. Willem showed himself worthy to be called your son. And again, as I said before, because of his betrayal, we actually started our guerrilla war, which gave us a chance against Nilfgaard. I don't say any of this to deepen your grief, Your Majesty. I mean merely for you to be proud of him. You're right. I thank you, Reynard. That I needed to hear. We've talked enough. We must march on to Aldersburg. Okay. So apparently, we're not done yet. Twilight of the Golden Sun, go to Damavan's camp. Is this a completely extra ma Holy crap! Okay, not too much holy crap, that might have been a bit too, too dramatic, but it is still a bit of a, a map. It's a bit denser than the other ones, but we still have some work ahead of us. So, with that said, I'd like to say thank you guys very much for wa watching, because I'm going to take a little break. We're not over yet, for which I'm very happy, but this has been a very long episode, at least for me it was. So, uh, thank you guys enormously for watching, and I hope to see you guys in the next episode of Thronebreaker The Witcher Tales. Goodbye.